Hello, my chess friends. Today's topic is uh, corresponding squares. If you want to learn more, you can find more videos for this topic on my channel. But uh, this uh, example in front of us uh, stands out from, from the ones I used before. I, I actually made it a little bit simpler. If, uh, if we put white's king to like a7, the position would be even more harder which would make it more difficult to explain in one, uh, in one shot. So white to move and win in this position. Basically, I'm going to provide you with the steps how to win these kind of positions. Well, step one, you clarify that your opponent doesn't have any counterplay, right? So the only active play black can think of is pushing e6 like going king f6 or king f7 and pushing e6, but then it's always losing because I'm going to take and then my king would just come closer to the d5 square. So, and then takes the e5 pawn using Tsukzwang. Okay, so once we clarify that our opponent has no active counterplay, we can think schematically, like I, I want to do this, what can he do about that? So make sure there's no counterplay. All right. So then you should ask the following question. Well, can he stop me from coming to d5? Well, since he cannot go e6, there's no way he can stop you from approaching an unprotected pawn. So imagine your king is already on d5. Where black should put his king? Well, it's f6, of course, right? You have to protect the pawn. There you go. So if it's black to move, black would lose in that position. Okay, but if it's white to move, the king has to step aside and there's no win. Okay, then the next square is d7. Can, can your opponent stop you from getting to d7? Well, no, because if he goes to e8, you can just go back and forth and wait, and then you are approaching the d7 square. Okay, so if you're on d7, where should black put his king? Well, it's f7. Black wants to keep the opposition and prevent you from approaching, right? Okay, but since we already have two squares away, and in both of the cases, if it's black to move, black loses, Right? So then you look at adjacent square to these two. Then it's c6. So you can go to c6. There's no way to stop you from doing that, right? If you go to c6, black should be very careful because if you go to d7 on next move, black should reach f7 square as pointed by the arrows. If white goes to d5, black has to go to f6. But black cannot be on f6 in that position because you just go king d5 and cannot be on f7 because you go king d7. The only square from which this is reachable is g7 square. Okay, so I'm, um, c6 corresponds to g7. Okay, so if you go to c6, the only square for black is g7. All right, but then you can think more about it. One more square, d8, attacking the e7 pawn. The only square for black to be is e f8, because if black's king is on f7, I'm going to remove the arrows for a second. If you go to d8 and black goes king f7, you just go king d7. And we just learned that these are corresponding squares and the king gets inside. Okay, so d, these are the arrows. d7, f7, d8, f8, d5, f6, c6, g7. All right, what does it mean then? If you are standing on c7, Right? So I'm going to remove these arrows because this is not interest, doesn't interest us anymore. If white king can go to c7 and the king can go there right now, black's king has to be on g8 to reach these three squares, right? So if you go for king c7 now, that's a big mistake. Black goes king g8 and wherever you approach, black can keep the balance. But, so this is g8 square. c7 corresponds to g8. I'm going to remove the unnecessary arrows for a moment now. Okay. If you go to c7, he goes to g8, right? But you can see the three squares are circled. You can go to c8 now. What would happen then? From c8, you can reach any of the three squares. And black in response has to reach any of those three squares. The only square where black king has to be is g7. But if you move to c8 first, if it's white to move, if you go to c7, he goes to g8 as pointed by the arrows. Right? So king c8 is the, is the winning move. King c8. 
And now black is the one to choose. Well, black cannot get into the corner because you just approach, right? So black cannot approach. You get here or there or next move, right? Uh, so approximate variation is uh, like this. And now the king goes to g7 and white would win. So black cannot go to d f7. The same applies to f8. You win the opposition and this is winning. But what if king goes to g8? Still waiting. Remember the arrows? g8 corresponds to c7. So you go to c8 because that corresponds to g7 and you pass the move to your opponent. He has to go to g8. And now you go to c7, he has to choose again. Still, black cannot approach, right? And black cannot go away. So black has to go to g7. Now, let's come back in your mind, ideally. g7 square, oh, I removed that arrow. d5 corresponded to f6 and c6 corresponded to g7. So you go to c8, he has to do this. He, black cannot approach, you do this. And now you go to c6. And now you threaten to go here and here, and d7, black has to reach f7, and d5, black has to reach f6, black has no move. If it was white to move, that would be a draw. But it's black to move, and black has to approach to not lose a pawn, and then you win if king f6, you approach and you win the e5 pawn. All right. So this is the winning move. King c8, you don't go king c7. It seems like, oh, I'm gonna win the distant opposition. Unfortunately, after king g8, suddenly black can make a draw here. Well, it's not obvious, but black can. And uh, I would like to, the, actually the much harder version of this one goes like this. In, not only king c8 is winning, another winning move, which I find, well, I'm gonna use the word ridiculous. The winning, another winning move is king to a8. And to explain this, I don't really understand it. I need a piece of paper to write down all the corresponding squares because here I used, uh, what did I use? I used, uh, um, where are my main arrows? They disappeared. Oh, that's too bad. These were the arrows, like this, like this, uh, sorry, like this, like this, like this, and then you can you can uh, do the uh, these squares, and then you can move it to the B file, and then you can move it to the A file. This is really really difficult. King A8. I'm gonna turn my engine for just a second for you to believe it. King A8 is also winning. This is really difficult. So to explain why King A8 is winning, of then you have to approach, but you have to be very careful how you approach, because if you lose this corresponding square, suddenly black can hold a draw. I hope you didn't find this one too difficult, and let me know if you understand the concept better after watching this. Take care, and goodbye.